I'm a foodie. I've always been a foodie. I've always cooked for people. We started with a cafe in Penagroyce. Some of the children had never seen a black person. So I thought, I'm going to bring Africa here. And I thought I'd do it through a cafe. From the cafe, we started doing African evening so that we could bring Africa by food to our local community and the wider community. So it gave people access to us and it made them understand us uh, better. In 2020, we had a very public racist attack um, on our building. So that went nationwide. I have zillions of letters and emails where people showed their support and told us, our village came together and told us how we were very much a part of the village. What I've, I'm doing in Wales, I have pioneered an African business from the heart of Wales, but I've also gone on to help others in their businesses. I've also worked with the Welsh Food and Drink Division to, as an ambassador to try and increase inclusion and diversity. It's nice to be recognised and I appreciate that someone uh, has recognised this and nominated me. I had seen people wearing teething jewellery, which were necklaces that mothers could wear and babies could play and kind of fiddle with while they were breastfeeding or just being cuddled or whatever. My background is in fashion design. So I thought, oh, I think I would wear those if they were a bit cooler, basically. So I started to create my own using black and wooden beads, which is where the name Black and Beach came from. But at the same time, we kind of had a lot of political stuff happening. So back home in Ireland, repeal the A, which was kind of the fight for reproductive justice was also taking place. So I developed a slogan which was a mother's places in the resistance. I was really interested in women and mother's position and particularly mother's position in feminism. And I didn't feel that there was a lot of representation for that kind of category, so to speak. I started selling those. We donated five pounds to abortion support network from each sale. And I chose that charity to work with because they were working a lot with Irish women who needed to travel to have abortions. And also they were very grassroots and kind of on the ground, but all their donation and all their funding is from the general public. I wanted to align the business with that campaign, that cause. It felt really close to my heart as an Irish woman and kind of spoke to my feminism, I guess. So that was kind of the start of Black and Beach really. I'm Managing Director of OTM Concierge. Our services are basically split into two, which is business services and lifestyle services. So the business services are very similar to that of a PA, where we do things like help with day-to-day -day admin, following up emails, client care, invoicing, all of those types of things. And then the lifestyle is a lot of kind of luxurious or time-saving tasks. I'm very organized and I kind of treat my personal life like my business where I schedule, you know, I've got a young boy who's three and he requires a lot of attention. Otherwise, he, God knows what he would get up to. So I do have to make sure that my kind of time that I'm not working is, is kind of a military operation of how I, how I organise myself. I love my team. They are amazing. And I guess I, I try to be there for them as much as I can be. I'm a bit of a champion of mums in business and I want to have a bigger family someday. And, you know, I'm not going to let you know, being a mum prevent me from achieving those goals. I was a personal trainer before um, lockdown happened, but I was working at the time from a garage in, at my mother's house. I'd converted our garage to a private studio. I was also in full-time union working two other jobs at the time, so I was pretty busy. And within a month of opening, I was forced to close because of lockdown. So everything sort of flipped on its head. And I was just reactive and proactive as, as well as I could have been initially to get everything up and running online. We were doing things like Instagram and Facebook Lives with like at-home workouts, minimal to no equipment, just to help people get moving a little more because we were stuck in the house at home. But those then that wanted to work with us more on a one-to-one -one basis, we were setting them up on our customer, creating training plans based around their goals. And I think as well, a big part of it will be our approach with how we help women because we are real world and we're here to show you that we can enjoy all of life's luxuries and still achieve the results we want and we don't expect perfection all of the time. And I think that's something that really hits home with a lot of our clients.